Seattle Public Schools is committed to ensuring that communication for district-sponsored programs, events, and activities are accessible to our students, staff, families, and community members with disabilities. Staff are being trained on the accessibility requirements of Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA. This training includes practical guidance that will help you learn how to make materials accessible to everyone. Let's meet some Seattle Public School students and learn how they access materials that they need. H H M. What does it say? Two days early. Went to school. I I'm in eighth grade and I go to Washington Middle School. Uh, the subjects I'm studying are science, math, social studies. Washington Middle School notifications switched unit one, unit two. Yeah, I can just zoom in on anything. Like if I were to look up something like bugs and then I could press search, and then I'd be able to zoom in to see, like if I were to try, read something, I would be able to zoom in and read it. I'm writing on my Braille display and my iPad. They can read what I'm writing on the iPad, but it's also put on Braille down here, just in case I can't read it, even though it's in really large print. Um, I have to put stuff close to my face to see it, even if it's giant. For parents, pet for kids. We support families as partners in their students' learning, and that is why we want to make sure information and educational materials are accessible not just to students, but to family members with disabilities as well. A person who is blind might use a screen reader program with a speech synthesizer. A person who is deaf needs captioning to receive information from a video or multimedia presentation. By learning about the technology, staff can make materials easier to use for everyone, students, staff, families, and the community. Seattle Public Schools is making sure its technology, including websites, software, and any electronic documents meet guidelines for equitable access and recognized accessibility standards. Resources ADA Portal. A web page has been created where staff can find training and helpful resources. The purpose of this page is to provide information about the law, district policies and procedures, and accessible technology. On the portal you can view district policies on accessible communications. Please review them. The portal includes a resource page that provides tips to assist in making documents, communications, web content, and technology accessible for all. The portal includes directions on how to request an accessibility review if you are unable to access content on the district's website, information about the accessibility of content or technology used by the district, and the ability to report barriers to accessing any technology used by Seattle Public Schools. Website editing. Websites are one of the most powerful communication tools used by Seattle Public Schools. When we purchase software, such as our current website content management system, CMS, we go through rigorous testing to confirm that it is compliant with the ADA. We create content on our websites and have the responsibility to do our part to follow federal guidelines to make and keep our content ADA accessible. It helps if um, if they do a lighter or wider background instead of the dark background. And it also helps if they don't have a lot of um, busy stuff on the website. Like for example, to make things look pretty, they might type something over a background that has graphics or a picture on it. And that also makes it difficult for me personally. When working with images, create descriptive alt tags that help visually impaired users understand the information that they cannot see. The only way that a screen reader can convey the meaning of an image is by reading text that has been added to the image's description when it was posted to the website. That serves as a substitute or alternative for the image. If there is no alternative text or alt tag, then the screen reader cannot accurately convey the meaning of an image. If it's labeled, it's nice because it'll actually tell you what's in the picture. If it's a picture of kids and staff, it'll say graphic with uh, students and staff. Unlabeled zero button. If it's not labeled, then it just says graphic, graphic, and you have no idea what it is. So that can be kind of frustrating if you're trying to navigate through a page and 
find a specific thing. For staff who update web pages regularly, there are quick reference documents available on the district website with step-by-step -step advanced instructions. Learning management system. To access materials on a computer, I would use a screen reader software. Tab, world geography of colon S25 left parent A right parent. Tab, toolbar home button. Tab, tab. Something that would read like text on the screen and then say it back. What link? Heading level two unit one assignments. Field. It makes it easier to access materials online if like uh, the website is easy to like access. Like if it's correctly laid out, like not a lot of stuff in one area. When thinking about educational materials for your class, remember the family members who support students need the same level of access. Choose captioned materials when possible. When posting your own video, you can add captions or provide a text transcript. When showing an image of an original document, include transcribed text that will allow the students and their families to understand the content of that document. Remember that the words on an image, such as the Declaration of Independence, will not be read in a screen reader. So keep that in mind when adding educational materials. PDFs. Be mindful that all navigation within electronic forms will be accessed using the keyboard rather than the mouse. So be careful to keep your fields in a linear order. It's not that blind people are incapable of moving or clicking a mouse. It's just that they don't know where to move it or when to click it since they can't see what's on the screen. On some of the PDFs, you have to memorize what checkbox is what. So for example, it'll say yes, no, and then underneath it are the checkboxes, and it will just say checkbox unchecked. And so that is a little bit tricky if you're not sure, you know, if you're checking yes or no. And in some cases, you really want to know what you're checking and making sure that you're checking the right box. PDFs can be created many ways. Some PDFs, for example, a scanned document, are really just an image which is not accessible. Accessible PDFs contain text and information that a screen reader can read. In an accessible PDF, images can be tagged with descriptive text. Marketplace. Before software is purchased, the district needs to follow steps to ensure it meets accessibility standards. If you are going to download or purchase software for your classroom, please remember that the product must be accessible. Family members may need the same level of access to support their students. For example, if you are asking parents to keep track of progress on a software at home, the software needs to be accessible to all parents, including those with visual or hearing impairments. For additional information related to ADA compliance on the software you are considering purchasing, refer to the resource link on the portal. With your help following these guidelines, we can make sure that Seattle Public Schools' electronic materials are accessible to all students and families. The portal is now linked from every Seattle Public Schools website, including the district and school sites, on the bottom of every page with a link titled, Non-Discrimination Statement. For additional information, contact the Seattle Public Schools Accessibility Coordinator at 206-252-0178 or email accessibility at seattleschools.org.